Hey everyone, I'm Laurentian. In this video, I'm going to talk about the two Crimson games on the PS2. So, Crimson C2 is the sequel to an Xbox game. They made the first game an Xbox exclusive, and then they made the sequel a PS2 exclusive. Crimson C2 is a beat-em-up RPG. The main part of the game, the combat, is nicely done. It feels satisfying through and through. Though, because this is what you always do in the game, it can get repetitive to always go for monsters and level up and upgrade your weapons, the standard stuff. But even if it's objectively repetitive, I still had fun. And the great combat never gets old. You get some escort missions or scout missions, but they revolve around the same combat. Also, if you haven't played the first Crimson game, don't worry. The story makes sense even if you haven't played the first game. So overall the game is great. It has a fair amount of depth, but that depth is overshadowed by how repetitive the game is. But still, even if the game is repetitive, the combat still somehow never gets old, which is a good deal. It might be repetitive, but it packs a lot of high quality action that never gets old. So it's worth it. It's a good game, but don't expect too much. And Crimson Tears has a similar structure. It has a different story and now you play as three characters instead of two. The gameplay is still repetitive, but again enjoyable. And the progressing is deeper and more complex. You play as robots and doing special attacks rises the temperature. By fighting you can get new weapons which have one of seven attributes, which is more or less useful depending on the enemy you're fighting. And you can also give paralysis, poisoning and burning damage. I don't know how I feel about the overheating problem. See, every time you launch an attack, your robot's temperature rises. And you need to collect coolants if you want to cool it down. Your inventory is only this big and coolants aren't found everywhere. But on the flip side, overheating makes you faster. But on the downside, it lowers your defenses. And if your character runs out of energy mid-level, you have the option to send a second character in a rescue mission that has to reach your down character within a time limit of a couple of minutes or so. I found this cool. And if you die during a boss fight, you can send another character and continue the fight from where you left off. The boss even has the same life bar. So it has the same amount of damage. And you can't use the items you had on the other character as each character has its own inventory. It's interesting that the game is incredibly repetitive and you need a lot of trial and error to swarm the randomly generated dungeons and, and you need a lot of patience to level up, collect items, die, lose items, start again until you're strong enough to progress to the end boss, but as repetitive as it is, it also can be a rewarding experience. 